Hi. In this video, I'm going to be giving you tips on focusing a 35mm single lens reflex camera. This is my fourth video in my series, 35mm film photography for beginners. In an earlier video, I talked about exposure and that film has a good bit of latitude. So if you're off a little bit in your exposure, it's more forgiving to overexposure, but if you underexposed a little or overexposed, it could be corrected in printing or when you scan your film. However, if your image is out of focus, you might as well just throw it in the trash. It's unusable. Yeah, I know you could sharpen a little bit in Photoshop, but if your image is out of focus, just forget about it. So I want to go over focusing this video, I guess, is for beginners, but anybody, I think, could benefit from it. So, 35mm single lens reflex camera basically had two types of focusing screens. One with a micro prism spot, such as this Pentax Spotmatic. Um, other cameras, and far fewer, had a split image rangefinder focusing screen. Now, this is an F2, but the Nikon F from its introduction in 1959, had a split image rangefinder focusing spot. Later on, in the early 70s, cameras started to have both types of screens in one. For example, this Nikon has what's called a case screen. It has a split image in the center surrounded by a microprism spot. And other manufacturers went to those screens as well. So let's just describe the two main types of screens first, and then I'm going to give you some tips on practicing focusing to improve your hit rate. Now the microprism spot, such as this Pentax Spotmatic, the Canon FT, Minolta SRT 101, I mean a, a Nikon had a screen like that called the J screen for the F and the F2, and basically what it is, generally it's a three millimeter center section, right, dead center of your viewfinder on your focusing screen, and it kind of breaks up the image a little bit. Uh, I can describe it almost as kind of like a shimmering. Um, and you turn your focus ring until it becomes clear and it's in focus. The split image screen, usually it's a horizontal split in the center of the screen. You need a vertical line to focus on with that, such as a door frame, the edge of a building, someone who has a striped shirt on, it'll break up one of those stripes, or a gentleman's tie. There's any number of vertical lines you can find in a scene uh, to use this type of focusing screen. And what you do, you turn the focus ring until that door frame or tie comes together, becomes one, as you can see. In this example, you could see the gray card was split, and now it's one. The split image screen makes focusing wide-angle lenses much easier than a microprism screen, especially indoors in a low-light situation. One negative of the split screen is that it isn't great with slow lenses. If you have a lens with the maximum aperture, let's say of 3.5 or f4, sometimes one half of that split will turn black and making that, that portion of the screen useless. Now you could always focus on the surrounding area and that goes for almost all 35 millimeter camera focusing screens. You could always focus on the outside area. Telephoto lenses, not so great with the split screen. I prefer the micro prism spot or just a plane using the plane area in your screen. I think uh, telephoto lenses are easier to focus because they're giving you all that magnification. Slow lenses, 3.5s or f4 maximum aperture lenses are more difficult to focus, especially indoors, because your viewfinder, your view through, this, through the camera is darker. That's why it's easier generally to focus outdoors. Another thing, if using the split image screen, and as I, I mentioned, 
you're looking for a vertical line. What if you can find no vertical line in your subject matter? What if you see some horizontal lines? Well, what you can do is just turn the camera to a vertical position, focus on that horizontal line, and then turn it back to horizontal to take your photo. I have a video on Nikon focusing screens for the F and F2 that I did, oh, I don't know, maybe about a year ago. So I'm gonna put a link in the description below to that video. It's specific to Nikon, but there is some good information on the various types of focusing screens that are available, and that may prove helpful to you. So take a look at it. So I've come up with something to help you practice your focusing and improve your hit rate, okay? I recommend what you do with this, do it indoors, in the kind of lighting indoors that you would normally focus in, okay? So we want, you know, just, just room lights, lamps, overhead recess lighting, whatever. Put a 50 millimeter lens on your 35 millimeter camera and take a piece of tape. Now I've already done this and I'll show you how to do this. So actually, let me just take it off. What we want to do is we want to put a piece of tape over the focus ring and over the distance scale. Okay, and what I usually do, just take a piece of uh, magic tape, okay, clear tape, fold over one end so it's easy to pull off and just tape it on to your focus ring. And then what you're going to do is pick an object, I don't know, maybe five, seven feet away, and from your seated position, focus on it. Okay, go past, focus it, look sharp, then go a little past and come back. Okay? All right, now that looks sharp to me. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pencil here and just put a little line on the tape at my focus position. And right here, it's a little less than seven feet. And now I'm going to throw the camera out of focus, turn it to infinity, or turn it to its minimum focus distance, and go back and focus on that same spot. And actually, I'm a tiny bit off. I'm, I'm almost at seven. So now I'm going to do it again. All right, this time I'm at seven again. So my guess is that I was off a little bit on my initial focus. And I'm at seven again. The whole idea behind this is to be consistent in your focusing. You know, if you focus on an object and you focus and you're seven feet away, let's say, and you look at your focus scale and it says six, well, something's not right. Just try it again. And just keep practicing that. Just keep practicing focusing indoors. You know, maybe spend a half hour a day for several days until you can consistently hit that same focus distance. Okay, it helps, it helps quite a bit. Try it with different lenses. Try it with your wide angles. If you have a telephoto, like I said, they're usually easier to focus. You know, you could practice with that too, especially if you're just starting out. Usually when you are photographing a portrait, you are focusing on the eyes, especially if you're using wide apertures. So you want to make sure it focuses on the eye. If the eye is sharp, even if the rest of the frame isn't, your picture is going to appear much sharper. So for close-up portraits, you always focus on the eye. Now, if you're 10 feet away with a 50 millimeter lens, that will give you the ability to do a full-length portrait of someone. In that case, you don't need to focus on the eye because as you learned in my previous beginner video, as you move away from the subject, depth of field is greater. So you can just focus, if it's a gentleman on his tie or a woman's blouse or, you know, on the mouth, whatever. And your depth of field at 10 feet, of course, is greater than if you were, let's say, four or five feet. So you don't necessarily have to focus on the eye. But what I want you to do, when you're photographing a person, they don't always stay exactly still, right? So if you have a subject in a chair, 
let's say five feet away, they're going to possibly move a little, especially if it's a child, right? So, so if you could find someone who will assist you with this, have them sit in the chair, you sit in the chair, and focus on them. Now, when you're focusing on people, when you're doing portraits, people don't stay perfectly still, especially children. So what you want to do is you want to be able to change focus, right, if they move back or they move forward a little bit. So have the person lean forward just a little. And instead of trying to refocus by turning the focus ring, you lean forward a little, trying to keep them in focus. Practice that for a while. Then have them lean back and stop. And then again, you are going to have to go further away. You lean back to try to keep them in focus. And that's much easier than trying to change your focus, to turn your focus ring to keep them in focus. So practicing these two things, marking your focus ring, doing that over and over again until you hit the same mark every time, and using that lean forward, lean back idea, it should help to improve your focus. If you want to do some street photography and you put a wide angle lens on your camera, let's say a 35 millimeter lens, you can just set your focus so that everything, depending on your aperture, is sharp and let's say, you know, seven feet to infinity. So all you have to do in that case is just point and shoot. You don't have to focus. Okay, so practice your focusing, especially in dim light. If you have a camera that has interchangeable focusing screens, such as a Nikon F or F2 or F3 or a Canon F1 or new F1, look at the other screens that are available. For the pro cameras, there's a lot of screens available. For the Nikon F and F2, for example, there were like 18 to 20 different screens available for different lighting conditions and different lenses. So do a little bit of research for your particular camera. Some other cameras, such as the Olympus OM-1 and OM-2 and the Nikon FE and some other Nikon uh, FM-2 and some other cameras, they took an interchangeable screen and you removed the lens and um, took the screen out that way. Using a little pair of tweezers, you were able to change the screens. And there were a few screens available for each of those cameras. Focus, like I said early on in this video, is very important. You got to get the, the subject in focus, or as I said earlier, you might as well just toss that negative into the trash. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I come out with a new video every Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. And I welcome your questions. Please email me. I don't mind emails. I, I will answer everyone or leave a question in the comments below and I respond to everyone's comments. And one other thing, if there's a particular subject you would like me to talk about, please, same thing, leave a comment below or send me an email. So again, thank you for watching. I will talk to you next time.